Cybersecurity never rests. We need to stay nimble and understand how threats are evolving and it's becoming more important how cybersecurity and regulatory requirements are becoming more and more intertwined. Let's take a look at four major trends in the cybersecurity industry for this year. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy, and I'm a vice president at ARG. And while I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not reflect the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is dedicated to helping technology leaders make great business decisions. And while 2023 is just underway, it's not too late to ensure that your cybersecurity and data protection strategies are aligned and aligned with what's happening on the outside world. I have four key areas to, that I suggest technology leaders focus on for this year. These top hits are not, of course, ex exhaustive, but if you're not at least focused on a few of these already, I suggest you consider them at this point. First, the edge gets less edgy. We all know that the work environment's not going back to normal, at least not completely back to normal. The evolution I see coming, I believe, is more of a focus on social media and the metaverse for customer engagement. This means that many of your employees, marketing, sales, and other customer engagement personnel, will be traversing cyber environments normally considered off limits under normal business practices. These users are going to be experimenting with new technologies and marketing techniques largely outside the control of IT. As a former marketer, I can tell you that marketing does not like IT telling them they can't explore new opportunities. They will find a way. Social media is only becoming more dominant in terms of time spent by typical consumers. The metaverse is, a, is in its infancy, infancy stage, but that's when marketers seek first mover advantage and the ability to dominate certain spaces they feel are good product messaging fits. This is the year to partner with marketing and sales and see where they will be forging ahead in social media spaces. Number two, more data privacy regulations. Gartner predicts that by the end of 2023, 65% of the globe's population will live under some form of data protection regulation. This means businesses must get serious about data protection. In particular, customers, or sorry, companies will be expected to conform to industry standards at a minimum. What industry standards mean is still open for discussion, but based upon previous case law, at least here in the United States, industry standard means having enterprise grade solutions for the most common cyber categories, such as endpoint perimeter, cloud security, security monitoring, and basic user segmentation and isolation, i.e. at least the beginnings of a zero trust platform. Understand that I'm not an attorney, so this isn't legal advice, but that's just what I'm seeing in the press. Let's say that if you line up your four top competitors and half of them have a solution, you should probably have that solution as well. It's a moving target, and civil suit liability can be significant. The excuse that we did not have budget for something will probably not go very far in a court of law. If you're not able to establish uh, industry standard cybersecurity for your organization, be sure to talk to your risk management group and make sure they're aware of your perceived limitations and exposures, and they might be able to influence your budget request or at a minimum boost their cyber uh, insurance policy coverage. Now, when they boost their cyber insurance policy coverage, there's a good chance that um, that coverage or that underwriter will require an adherence to basic industry standard practices in the process of getting more. Um, that's a process of, that you might experience in terms of getting more advocates in your corner for the solutions to bring you and your organization up to industry standards. Next is zero trust practices. I think they're going to become mainstream, at least the foundational elements of it. I just mentioned that basic zero trust practices are becoming industry standard. I did not say that zero trust frameworks would be mature soon. I think that's too much to ask, but basic zero trust policies will become widespread. How to incorporate the concept of zero trust, um, which is you know, never trust, always verify into your environment, and it can be a tricky thing to do. Replacing legacy VPNs with next generation secure remote access is a good start. Traditional VPNs create authentication sessions at the edge of your network. This is like someone walking to your front door and asking permission to enter. Um, the next gen remote access platforms that are out there use proxies off the network and only send authenticated traffic back to your resources. 
This is like having a security gate well away from your entrance where visitors can be screened before they're admitted into the immediate area. Basic micro segmentation, keeping users out of network segments and systems where they do not need access is going to be uh, become a requirement as well. There's no need for your production teams to have access to client information, branch workers accessing headquarters files, or your sales organization to access financial information. Isolating users based upon reasonable need reduces the attack surface and exposed uh, area for any particular employee. Uh, number four, I mentioned threat detection. That's our last topic. Threat detection is monitoring um, of your network for emerging threats and allowing you to block the threats before damage uh, can occur. Most large organizations are now engaged in active threat detection on their networks. The activity we see within larger firms is that they're now looking to reduce the cost of the previously implemented platforms. Smaller firms, however, those under uh, 1,000 employees or so are very far behind in this area. And I understand why threat monitoring has a higher cost than other point solutions. Not only is there the platform cost, but there's a much higher cost in terms of personnel. If you wanted to staff your monitoring operations 24 by seven, you'd need at least seven people, not working full time, but available to cover all the shifts required over the course of a week. Most IT departments do not have seven trained security engineers. This is why I recommend going to a managed security service provider or MSSP for your threat monitoring. MSSPs will include the solution licensing in their cost and can staff your monitoring team much more efficiently than you could. Their engineering costs get spread over multiple clients and MSSPs are usually much better at, uh, attuned at, to threats due to the volume they see. This allows them to be much more effective in identifying false positives and avoiding unnecessary investigations. Also, overall, um, an overall cost reduction that I don't think you would realize if you were to go at your own. If you don't have managed threat detection, that should be high on your 2023 priorities. If you do have it and, and want to investigate how to lower your costs, there may be great opportunities to do so this year. So there you have it. These are the four areas uh, for critical cybersecurity and data governance and protection operations for the next year. If you'd like to discuss any of these topics, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is in the description of this video. And if you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a like, thumbs up, and thank you very much in, in advance for doing that. If you'd like to find your way back to this channel in the future, the best way of doing that is to hit the subscribe button below. That will put my videos in your feed and you can come back here at any time at your convenience. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.